Good morning, everybody. I have a new toy, and I may not have to turn my glasses. We've tried it before, and it didn't work, but, but Joshua did his magic with it, and so now I'm going to be clicking, and that way maybe our program will keep up with what's going on up at the screen. It's an evolution of, 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 of learning all of these things. So welcome, uh, everybody, and Thomas, thank you for the meditation this morning, and Carla, thank you for yoga this morning. Great way to start the day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, acknowledgments. I, I just want to acknowledge all of you. I want to acknowledge everyone that has been doing so much just to take us in the directions that we're going. I mean, just everybody here is doing something, and that, whether that be showing up or, or just being present. And I just want to acknowledge everyone for everything that's occurring here. Um, and about the only way to do that is just keep reading these announcements as they grow and they change, uh, but we do have, uh, I'd like to do some announcements real quick. Uh, do we have any new visitors in with us today? Got two over here. We got two Louise right here. Anybody over on this side? Are we good? we just like to say, we're just going to give you a little gift and say thank you very much for being here. It was nice talking to you on the phone last week, and uh, I'm glad you were able to make it today. It's a blessing. We are, Sandy Asbill from over at the uh, Unity of the Mountains will be here at 2 o'clock today for the Sustainable Living Group doing a vermiculture workshop. I hope you all can stay for that. That's the organic way to grow your food, to create clean foods so you're not putting toxins into your body and learn how to grow that food yourself uh, and without using miracle Grow, without using those things that are harmful for our bodies, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Mary will be starting on the first Monday of the month in her astrology class, which she's been doing, and uh, people have really enjoyed that tremendously, and she's very talented, very skilled at it. Next weekend is our yard sale, and you probably saw all this stuff. And, I, you know, it, it's so cool. You know, I just feel like this energy is kind of breaking through between all of all of Blairsville and our two unity churches here you know it's like we want to support each other and love each other and they brought us over a truckload of stuff for the garage sale next week next week and we unloaded it all in here you know it's just that's that's how we are that's what community is that's us working together and doing things together so and I'll be doing a wedding over there uh, on next Sunday for somebody so, you know, that's the movement we want is just people flowing in and out and loving each other as an entire community. So I thank you all for helping move that energy forward. Uh, prayer chaplain training is coming up the 23rd and 24th of that month. If you haven't signed up, it, the, please look at all the signups we have. But the prayer chaplain training is going to be up at Chi House. We launched that. Uh, we have a house manager there. Uh, his name's Devison, which you'll meet him in your own time. Um, I believe he is here today, so y'all can check that out as, as you go through the day. But we have a house manager up there, and we have started doing bookings up there for the retreat center. So as we do that, uh, prayer chaplain training, we are going to host it up there. So whoever wants to come to that, it's going to be free for you. Oh, we need to mark that on the calendar, that 23rd and 24th, and I think we already have. But that's free for everyone to come up, spend the night work together, learn how to be a prayer chaplain. We don't have prayer chaplains here right now because we are new and we're beginning. But a prayer chaplain is so important because it, it gives people additional people to pray with right after service, during service, any time that we're doing so. And they also stand in the corners of the room and they hold space when we're in prayer, when we're holding energy, and they, they create that, that space to hold everything that's happening here. So it's important. So if you'd like to come, there's, I think, a $50 donation they've asked, but you know, if, if you need help, please let us know for scholarship purposes. So uh, please sign up if you'd like to attend that. And we need to know because we only got like 10 spaces or you can sleep on the floor during the retreat. Uh, Carla uh, is d just did her first book set. We're having her celebration of her first book. And uh, she's just so lovely. And she's been inspired by all of you. She posted it on Facebook by everyone and everything here. She, she uh, was just totally inspired by this, by this community we're building. And she wrote a book. And we thank you for your amazing work. We also have the regional, the regional youth conference, which is called the Wayshowers Conference. That'll be here for the entire southern region coming up on July 21st and 22nd. Um, at this point, I'd like to say next Sunday, and this is real important to our next phases of growth, is next Sunday we are going to do a youth organization meeting right after service. 
since I've been here, I've, I've just been kind of saying, okay, what, what does a youth program look like for Unity? And I'm sure everybody else here has been asking the same questions. But we have people that have been saying, hey, I think a youth program might be this, or it could look like this, or I'm seeing this in the community. So as all those things are brought in to, for me to share with you, you know, we've kind of come up with an idea. And right now that idea kind of looks like at-risk youth, bullying, transgender, lesbian, gay, straight alliance type of thing that seems to be occurring. That seems to be what is being brought forward. So uh, we're, and also our youth program, we have a leadership conference coming up here and we don't really have youth that age to go into that program for the middle of the month, but I'm thinking things could happen. You know, I've, I've been to the um, uh, PFLAG meeting and, and they had a couple of, of, of youth show up there. So, and we, ha there's just different callings from prisons to et cetera, et cetera. But it's, I think it's time, I think we have another, we, oh, uh, with the hike, we're starting a hike. Uh, he's not here right now. Brent's gonna start a hike the first Saturday of every month for all of us mm -hmm. and to also begin offering these youth something to do. Uh, in community. Yes, ma'am. And the hike, the first hike, we plan on going to the Swing Bridge. That's right, the Swing and Bridge. So, it's yep. It's not really as much of a hike as just a mountain walk. Awesome. So that'll be our first on the first Saturday of the next month. So anyway, that regional youth conference is going to be here July 20th, 21st, and 22nd. And then our food bank. There are a lot of things going on in the world as far as just earth changes. We've had tornadoes around. We've had all kinds of, there are just things going on, and you all are fully aware of many of them. We are building our food bank here so that we can be here for community should we ever need it if there's around us the need for food or anything. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really wanting to put an effort into building a food bank right here underneath those cabinets and those shelves, and we'll, we'll, we'll find places just to be here should there be anything that happened where we would like to support each other. So uh, on that, let me go back to lighting the Christ candle. Did you take it there or did it do that all by itself? Yes. Please. That's right. Okay, so the Reiki Circle starts Tuesday, June 6th. Tuesday, June 6th. So we got a week in between before we start that, right? And then we're also starting the Course in Miracles, which will be on the next event as well. Course in Miracles is going to be on Thursday. Monday evenings, we have a Course in Miracles course starting as well, which is a lot of people have been asking about these things. So, and, and, they, and I may have missed them things, but they'll show up on next week's calendar and next week's events. So yeah, just lots of beautiful, beautiful things. So now we light the, and just take a moment and bring ourselves into the space from all the excitement and the knowledge. And then of course last night, the concert, oh, just beautiful. Let's, uh, we're lighting the Christ candle, calling in that energy of that Christ consciousness that flows through us. That's what the candle represents. The power candle for May is purple, and it's the ability to master and have dominion and control. I have the power to create my world. The color is purple, and it's represented by the Apostle Philip. Let's take a moment, close our eyes, get some a little bit of music, if I could, Mary and Tom, in the background. And we open our hearts. And we say, thank you, Mother, Father, God, Source, Universe, all that is. We are so blessed and we are so grateful that we can be in a space of community with a capital U in there. And we pray that as we continue through the 12 powers, that exists within each of us. We come to know that divinity that is represented through each of those powers within us. And anything that's not real is sloughed off, is just let go of, and it dissolves into the infinite and is transformed into the life that which it came. We say thank you, amen, namaste, and namaskar. Jennifer, thank you, as Jennifer's going to do daily word for us today. Thank you.
Good morning. As, Good morning. as I was introduced, my name is Jennifer. Um, and on this wonderful rainy morning, um, let's see here. We, uh, I appreciate the divine order and clarity expressing in every part of my life. There is a satisfaction in the feeling that my own ego mind is in control of the events in my life today and for days to come. However, there is a deeper, richer satisfaction that I experience when I surrender to the loving power that causes everything in the universe to flow and express in order and harmony. In, in that surrender, I release my own limited efforts to organize my life. There is one power and I am part of it. I am an essential part of a purpose more vast than my mind can imagine. I know that my day unfolds as an expression of that purpose. I give thanks for divine order in my life, joyously embrace and rely upon the clarity that expresses in every part of my life. And today's reading is from Revelations 1.8. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. And our prayer box, prayer box is right outside uh, behind Luis's head. And Luis, thank you for being a greeter. If anybody in here would ever like to help be a greeter, help Luis, please let Luis or me or someone know, and we'll, we'll move forward with that too. Uh, but the prayer box is there. And that prayer box is for your thoughts, if you want to just inject them into that box, or you can get a little form that's on the side of it, write it in for someone. But what we do right now is we take, a, well, those, those, those prayers are then sent to Unity, yeah, the, the Unity, <laughs> to, to <laughs> and, and then they're prayed over for 30 days at Silent Unity. So, so please feel free to put that in there. And at this time, if we just close our eyes, and if you'd like to say the name of anyone you may want to send love and hire good to, feel free to say that out loud now or say it silently. And now, if you would say the statement of truth with me, repeat after. There is only one presence, one power, active in the universe and in my life. God the good. All right. And Mary, again, if we could get a little bit of music, we'll go into our meditation and space of silence in just a minute. So we take a deep breath in and breathe out. We begin to feel ourselves being lifted into this place of understanding as we focus on the words will, order, and zeal, three of the powers that are within us, that when used along with the other powers, the other 12 powers that guide this soul, that lead us from non-truths about those words and to the innermost depths of what those words actually mean. We're guided higher and higher in our awakening and our consciousness. And we use these powers that have been gifted to us through the Christ consciousness information that flows through and what has been called in as we as humans from God. The God within us expands and reaches out and is in honor of every step we take. And as we go into the silence, we feel and know these things ever more clearly.
And as we begin to come back into the room, we can ask that you stay in this meditative state throughout the rest of the service if you would like, and even carry that home. We no, longer, we no longer need to come in and out of these spaces. We can work in these higher frequencies and these higher dimensions and stay grounded while staying balanced in the truth of who we are. If you would open your eyes, please, and or close them. We'll do the Lord's Prayer in your own version. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thine is done, on earth as it is in heaven. And we are given this day our daily bread, and forgiven our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we are led not into temptation, and we are delivered from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. So it is. Amen. Namaste. Namaste. It's a remind you of your life. <laughs> it reminds me of my life. <laughs> and you know, going up and down all those hills and around those circles and turning upside down, it was fun. Sometimes it made you throw up. <laughs> you know, so so while we're taking this journey of of the ups and the downs and the rounds and the you know, in the smooth places and the places that exhilarate you. Um, we really are reminded of what, what this journey is, what we're doing here, and, 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 and how we go about finding that. Um, so in that, we have been working on the 12 powers, and, and uh, those 12 powers within us. What did I do with that? Was that the next one? Those 12 powers within us, when we start using them and, and even understanding what they are as compared to what we're taught they are just in, every, in the everyday world, you know, we begin <laughs> to say, wow, this is totally... When we begin to get f filled up because we've let go of all the things that have kept us from understanding the true understandings of what the 12 powers are, we begin to understand the world and life in a different way. We begin to use our gifts in ways that serve others and the world through our actions, through what we do, rather than for ourselves. And then by doing that, by understanding the deeper meanings of who we are, we awaken. We become more aware than we ever have of what these look like. The first one we, we're going to talk about is will today. And uh, there's just there's so many pieces, and I, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do some pieces because they stimulate me in ways that that I like to share with you. Again, from 12 Powers, Charles Fillmore, again, the, the, the more I read, the more I study him, and I invite you to read and study. And I was actually even thinking. How many of you have been to these, these uh, the 12 powers, you, like every week since we've done them? How many would be interested in doing a workshop on the 12 powers? Some possibility there? Because there's just so much to go through in, in doing this that I can't even begin to touch on it. Uh, the idea is that the development of the will is possibly only through the development of the mind as a whole. And as man is mind, the will is the man. The conclusion is reached because the will moves to action all other factories of the mind and seems to be the whole process. So we're looking at will as being this really powerful thing that can change everything that might be going on with us by the simple thought of my will is going to be this or a greater will coming through me is going to be expressed. Your choice. <laughs> <laughs> completely your choice. Silver. It's represented by the color silver. It's the front of the brain of the ability to choose, decide, and lead. This one really, and I, I am going to do a little bit of reading today because they're just, these two closely related forces of the mind are dominant in the race because their practicality is necessary in man's free development. If the imagination, imagination and will, they run together, if the imagination were wholly in command, and you know this, we've been here, 
It would eventually run into a riot of daydreams or fanciful schemes that could not be worked out successfully in a world where natural law is inexorable. It is the peril that the mind consciousness brings forth in sequence will and understanding. The highest and most excellent thing in man is formless, and we must guard against giving it shape of anything that is not noble. If we take how do I want to put this? If we take imagination and just let it run wild, and we've done it, we've all done it, we let it run wild, we are not grounded. So whatever is running around there, like, let's do that, let's do that, let's do that. Oh, that sounds great. That's, it's coming not necessarily always from our mind, but if it's guided by our mind, if it's guided by our will, there's a train wreck right, waiting, getting ready to happen just because there's, there's no grounding it. And what the will does is when we, when we start looking at this, it gives us the ability to use the other powers to ground ourselves so that as we are grounded and we're giving, given imagination to go do what we want with it, we're grounded enough to use the other powers like wisdom, like power, to actually bring forth something really powerful to ourselves and those around us and those we serve. The spiritual life in the subconscious is often prevented from expressing itself by the opposition of the will. So if man's will is opposing the will of what is truly running through us when it's not encumbered by falsities, we have a choice again. We can, we can get grounded and we can do amazing, powerful work, or we can do things for ourselves. And I think that's really where, it's, where, all, where all of this comes down to. The state of mind acts through the solar plexus, and therapy brings in limitation upon the whole system. So it balances by, by, by using will as a powerful tool to a, and a clear tool rather than just, than just something we're jumping around by these two using themselves together. We can create about anything we want. And we do create anything we want. Each of us, by using these tools, are creating exactly what we ask for all the time because through that power of the prayer, of intentioning, of speaking the words, it comes to truth in your life. I mean, can we all relate to that? Are we at that place where we are understanding that we are truly responsible for these things? And the moment we can let go of our own will and allow the flow of life, the flow of God, the flow of energy, the flow of all that is to come through us, and we understand it from the understanding of the truth that that is, rather than our own truth, which the will can make up. If it wants to make it up, it's going to make it up. This is our story. This is my story. It's your story and your story, and you're making it up as you go. You are co-creating with God. You are co-creating with Source every minute of your life. Uh, you know, we were doing this, and, and so what I'd like to do, I'm going to go back to doing this if we've got enough time. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and remember what we ask of our subconscious will be presented. Always is. Might be in a minute, might be in an hour, might be at the end of the day, and it might be in a week. Ask yourself this question so you can bring about an awareness that is higher than where it is now. What is my consciousness in faith? Ask that question. What is my question in will? My apologies. Will. What is my consciousness in will? Let it go. Okay? You've asked the question. Let it go. Now, Meditate on your consciousness in will. Now, put it out there and sit quietly.
Okay, now we're going to go into the next law of order. Okay. These are really, I mean, they sound somber, but this is exciting stuff. When you get into will, order, and zeal, this is real exciting stuff because this is where the energy comes from to create all this stuff from within your existence, from within you. So this is, you know, I'm talking somberly, but I'm giving you a comparison of what you can create, what you have the choice to create. Is it going to be your will or is it going to be the will of the one, of God, of source, of all of us? So will. There's just so much I'm having to pick. Um, right here, however, religious teachers should be on the guard. Now, remember, when Charles Fillmore taught, he was teaching. This was a, a, a study group that people went to after they went to their Baptist church, their Methodist church, their Pentecostal church. So that's who he's speaking to when we're reading this. He's speaking to everyone that goes to a denomination because this wasn't even a domino- denomination. This was a study group. The only reason this became a church was for tax benefits. That's what I believe. You do business as a church, you know. So, right, I mean, and when I put the pieces together in my head and I hear stories from people from 50 years ago or 70 years ago that are still alive today and they talk about how unity came to be, this is the realization I'm getting. Right here, however, religious teachers should be on the guard in framing tenets for religious organizations. This is so important, even within unity. Do not dogmatize in creed or statement of being. This is coming from Charles Fillmore. Direct order, people. From Charles Fillmore. Do not dogmatize in creed or statement of being as a governing rule of thought and action for those who join your organization. Do not dogmatize. Do not say, well, in order for you to come to my church, in order for you to believe what I believe, do you believe that Jesus Christ was put on the cross and was resurrected for your sins and blah, 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 all those things that you hear. George, I, 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 I'm sorry, I agree with Charles Fillmore. Don't dogmatize that stuff because what are you doing? What are you doing when you do it? These things are limitations and they often prevent free development because of foolish insistence on the consistency. The creed that you write today may not fit the viewpoint of tomorrow. So you sit here and create a dogma on it, and it doesn't work anymore, and now you've still got the dogma, and it lives through all your people. <laughs> insanity. Playing insanity. Hence, the safe, sure, religious foundation for all men is that laid down of Jesus, the Spirit of truth, shall guide you into all truth. Keep it simple. Stupid, right? Kiss them. A statement setting forth the teaching of a religious instruction is essential but complete. Compelling clauses should be omitted. We're not here to convince people. It's one of the lessons. We're here to be the example. And then when we teach, let the truth run through you, that is the truth, using these beautiful powers that are within us. (laughs) You get a different outcome. Let's do our meditation on order now. Uh, Wait. That's not where we were. Okay, you unseal. All right. Okay. So, olive green is the cover, as the color. It's at the back of the navel, kind of where you would see your second chakra. Ability to organize, balance, and sequence. I just invite you to close your eyes on order. And in that space, ask your consciousness, what does order in my life look like? Show me. The truth is that the divine mind rests in a perpetual Sabbath. And that which seems work is not work at all. When man comes so at one with the Father mind as to fill it consciously, he also recognizes this eternal peace in which all things are accomplished. 
when things are in order within our lives and in our minds, all things are accomplished. He then knows that he is not subject to any conditions whatsoever and that he is Lord even of the Sabbath. I'm going to ask you to sit quietly and meditate on that for one moment, please. Easy. You've asked the question, let it go. Now sit with nothing in your mind if you can, or let the thoughts flow through. All right, let's open our eyes. We're going to the next power, zeal. Fun, 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 zeal. Zeal's so fun. Zeal keeps us alive. Zeal, when you've got zeal, you know it. When you don't got zeal, you know it. <laughs> and, it and sometimes we have to take a rest from the zeal. <laughs> you know, sometimes we just got to rest a little bit because we, we can burn ourselves out. And again, by not using these other powers that we've been going through, by not learning how to use them powerfully, <laughs> We can burn ourselves out. To be without zeal is to be without the zest of living. Zeal and enthusiasm incite to glorious achievement in every aim and the ideal that the mind (coughs) conceives. Zeal is the impulse to go forward and urge behind all things. Without zeal, stagnation, inertia sets in. The man without zeal is like an engine without steam or an electric motor without a current. Energy is real in motion, and energy is the forerunner of every effect. If I can think of three of the powers that I have asked to work on more than any other powers, it would be these three because they get out of whack for me personally. And when I let them get out of whack, I get out of whack. So life, the, the 55 years I've had here, <sighs> back when I was always thinking for me, how am I going to do this for me and my family? How are we going to make it? How am I going to make enough money? How am I going to pay the bills? All that pre-programming training I'd learned since I was a child, as I was going through all that, I would go gangbusters. My whole life has been like this. And, and I'm sure you can relate in your own ways to that. But I would go so gangbusters. And when I was young, when I was in my 30s and even my 40s, I, I didn't have to stop very often. Maybe once every five years. Something like that. But now, by calling in these powers... And learning how to use them, not for me, that was also killing me, by the way. It was, also, it was killing every cell in my body because I was exhausting them. And I was working out and taking care of myself, but my soul was being affected in a very strong and powerful, unhealthy way. Other than teaching me how not to do things, which that's the power and the beauty of what I got to experience, like all of us, right? We get to experience how not to do it so that we can come back, learn these powers, learn the deeper wisdom meanings of what we're learning, and then have a good experience. Hopefully we're not too old to do that. And that's what I love about a lot of the millennials and the younger ones coming in. They're wise on these issues already. And then it's our job to tell our story so that we can share that with them so that as they bring forth new energy and new light and new communities into the world, maybe they heard something that will help them move through that much more quickly. You, know, you can read a book all day long. You can take tests all day long. But until you have to live it, until you have to live that test, but, but by having the book, when you get to live the test, you get to move a whole lot faster, right? It's a tool. Some have named the universal life impulse God And have left the impression that it is... Now, we're on zeal, okay? Some have named the universal life impulse God. Universal life, source, God, universe, like, everything. The tree, love, you, 
that painting, it's all God. This is of God's creation coming through us. God mind are three, therefore involved, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, that is all of God and that is all of the attributes of God are therefore involved in a conscious entity in every situation where life is manifest. In this day, lack, discrimination, God's spirit goes forth in mighty streams of life, love, substance, and intelligence. Each of these attributes is conscious only of the principle involved in it and the work that it has to do. Zeal. Life force flowing through you. When it's flowing, you are, you know, you have the deeper understanding. You are not having to think of it. You've already done all this thinking your lifetime. When zeal's coming through and you're in the flow and you are in order and zeal is flowing through you, you know what to do. Every time. You know it. You're walking and you're actually walking in it. This is what it feels like to me. When that is happening, when I am in the flow, I am walking because I am hearing and understanding and knowing. Knowing. That's the beauty of it. We all get to know it. So we're walking, and all of a sudden we're, I mean, there's days where we're running. And it's lasting a long time now for us. It's lasting for months and years at a time. I can say it because it's happened to me. I can say it because other people have told me it's happened to them, and it is continuing to happen to them. And we go through these phases where we'll fall out of it for a minute. Why? Because maybe we've tried to control it some form or fashion we've gone back to the old way for a moment or a month or a year or a breakup and we try to control something not in the, not not in not in the universe of god you can't control that let it go the sooner you let it go the sooner all of the joy and bliss will return to your life Never repress the impulse, the force, the zeal welling up within you. Commune with it in spirit and praise it for its great energy and efficiency in action. At the same time, analyze and direct its course. Discernment. Let me go back to the... We want to make all of these things efficient, as efficient as we can. Keep them simple as we can. As zeal alone, it is without intelligence or, dis- or, or desertion as to results. As Jesus taught his disciples and combined their various talents, archetypes, that's what I call you, that's what I call me, We are all archetypes. And maybe these could be the archetypes for all I know. There's some of us that have strengths within these archetypes that are stronger than other people's strengths within those archetypes. And with that, they go and they do unusual and amazing things. They create engines. They build houses. They teach. They study. You are not to repress but to guide the spirit of enthusiasm, which in cooperation with wisdom will bring you happiness and satisfaction. Zeal is the affirmative impulse of exister. Its command is go forward. Through the impulse, man forms many states of consciousness that he ultimately tires of. How many times have you gotten tired of the stuff you created? <laughs> I created that. Oh, it sucks. (laughs) That sucks so bad. So what do we do when we realize it sucks? We go back and we change it. We go back into our meditation. We've already formulated the next thought processes within this amazing mind we have. And we've said, (sighs) okay, I'm going to take a break for a minute. Figure out what that was I just did. 
Cancel, cancel, clear, delete. Okay, I'm going to go back into my prayer, creating my affirmations and denials, using what's coming through me, not using my own thinking. That's your wisdom. Those are the experiences that say, allow this to come through, but next time use the wisdom that's in there and do it a little bit more wisely. And in that, you'll find the happiness. They may never have served a good purpose in their day in the grand scheme of creation, but as man catches sight of higher things, zeal urges him forward to their attainment. So I bless you with all three of these powers. Let's go into zeal real quick. Close your eyes if you would. And ask our question, what is my consciousness in zeal? Take time to be holy. Turn a portion of your real to do God's will in the establishing of his kingdom within you. Do not put all of your enthusiasm into teaching, preaching, healing, and helping others. Help yourself as well. Many enthusiastic spiritual workers have led their zeal to demonstrate truth to others, rob them of their power to demonstrate truth for themselves. Do not let your zeal run away with your judgment. Some persons go so fired within zen <laughs> when they first tackle a job that they quickly grow tired and eventually get fired from every job they ever tackle, and we don't have to th do that anymore. Not necessary. You know your jobs. Go out and do your jobs with zeal. And balance yourself. And we'll have a great week doing that, I promise you. We're going to have a great week every week, and we're going to continue to bring this energy. We're going to continue to bring this learning. Uh, I just do want to mention last week, Mary Cincy, thank you so much. She brings tools to our Wednesday night courses. Every, we do a potluck every Wednesday night. I hope you will start coming to those. That's a place where we talk about our zeal. That's where we talk about our ideas. That's where we talk and manifest our creations on Wednesday night. She's going to be every other week. And so this week, we are not doing that portion of, of the potluck. So it'll be a potluck, and, and we'll, see, we'll see what comes to the table for this one. Um, and then next week it'll be back on again. But it's, it's powerful stuff because actually what, where we were going when we started doing that work was I would get up and talk about it, but I, I wasn't ready to teach that class. You know, we needed a teacher to teach how do, you, how do we change the way we speak? How do we change the way we work in the way that we want to do it that's going to really raise us up? And Mary has those tools. Thank you. Thank you for bringing them.